with that, you're going to have some changes to make on your staff. How do you go about you know, replacing the, per the first person you thought of to, to join you here? Yeah, you know, there's change every year. You know, it's going to be the, the, the players. There's going to be turnover in the roster. There's going to be turnover like there is every year in the, the, the coaching staff. You know, I have to take some time and, you know, be able to do what's best for the team, to be, be able to identify um, who's the best person and what's the best situation uh, for, our, for our players. Do you want to build – you, you tried to keep the offense in the same yeah, line sure. with Arthur. Do you want to try to do that or think about doing that on defense? Well, you always want to try to do that. You always want to do what's best for the players and the team, and, and hopefully, um, you know, there will be continuity. And, um, you know, again, that's, that's a process that – that we've begun and will will continue to do. I presume Columbus was still appealing to carry, even even given Mammon some potential here. Um, I, you know, I never want to be the coach that um, keeps keeps people from doing things that they want to do. Um, I've I've had that happen to me, so um, happy for Kerry. And um, again, he's he's on his way to Columbus. Are there a lot of guys in the league who have? coached under Dean and know his defense? I mean, will, will, it, be, will it be hard to find somebody who, who is well-versed in his system? Or at least familiar with it? Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of options as far as, you know, being able to, to bring guys in to interview. And, and again, I want to take my time. I want to make sure that um, you've heard me talk about things with the staff. I mean, it's important um, that, that, that I'm comfortable with the person that's going to be you know, in that role. Um, you know, so again, this is not something that's going to be done overnight. Um, and then we'll we'll make sure that we do what's best for the team. <coughs> On top of all the coaching changes, what was today like as you as you say goodbye to your second uh, team here? Well, I mean, I didn't. You know, same way I didn't prepare a speech in the locker room after the game. I didn't. You know, I, I would rather have stood in front of them and. Talked to him about keys to winning the Super Bowl. Um, that didn't happen. I thanked him. I'm thankful for for their effort. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm proud to to say that I coach them. Um, talked to him about what they represent away from here, um, their family, this organization, uh, their careers. Um, just just reminders to to always put the team first. To celebrate this season. That this isn't, you know, as disappointed as we are, this isn't a funeral. Uh, this is a, this is a, should be a celebration of a, of a team that that battled, that competed, and and we have a long way to go. You know, we have to host some of those games. You know, we have to get to the point where we host them. But I think that we improved. I think we're a better team um, now than we were at any point in the season. I think we're better than we were last year. Those are the things that I talked to him. I asked him to thank everybody in the building that, that helped them do their job. That's important to me. How much did the, the culture that's in the locker room and the brotherhood that you guys have sort of, I guess, jumpstart the team when things didn't start so well at the beginning of the season? Well, I think when things get hard, I mean, those are the only things that you can grasp onto. You know, the harder it gets, um, you have to, you know, to make sure that your circles, um, as, as tight as it can be, and that uh, you know, the players were the ones that ultimately got us out of that. I think the leadership uh, from those players did that. Um, you know, there's going to be ups and downs through the course of every every season, and and hopefully our staff and, and myself and everybody involved can you know, you know be able to to get it corrected as quickly as possible. But it, the credit all goes to the players. That's that every time we win and every time that. And we do things well on the field. The credit goes to the players. Have you and John seen enough that you want and or expect Ryan Tannehill to be your quarterback next year? Well, I think Ryan did a fantastic job. I'm happy and proud for him that he was able to come in in the seventh game and uh, lead us to the AFC Championship game. He also um, was today you know, selected into the Pro Bowl, which is a, it's a huge honor for someone that came into the seventh week. Um, you know, Now John and I, We'll meet and we'll talk about the roster, about the free agents, about contracts. You know, our focus has always been about beating the Chiefs. That didn't happen, so now our focus is on, you know, the off season. There was a, uh, I guess, 
from the Dennis Kelly hold, there was a flag that was immediately thrown and there was holding called on Kelly on the play. Was there also a formation issue that maybe just wasn't spelled out by the official? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Talk about your, the rookie class this year, what you guys got out of them and, and their production for you. Um, yeah, I thought there was good production. I think that, um, you know, Jeffrey, you know, worked his way back. He worked hard to, to get his get himself back. Um, told him, um, you know, it would have been easy for him to to not do that, to kind of tap out and just kind of punt this year. And he didn't do that. He battled through. He battled through a lot of soreness, like a lot of players. And uh, you know, he cares, and I'm excited to to continue to work with him. You know, AJ, you know, blossomed. Love his attitude. They're, it's fun to coach. Just this is the worst day of coaching, you know, now until the players come back because there's no players. You know, that's you, know, you don't you don't coach. I never got into coaching to to evaluate players or to, to watch tape. I, I got into coaching because I wanted to make players better, you know, just like the coaches that made me better. And so this is the this is the worst time of you know, really my year. And for them, that's probably their best time of the year. They're getting the hell out of here, you know. And, you know, so, again, I can't wait for these guys to get back already to try to help them, you know. You know, Monty Hooker um, played a lot for us, special teams, safety, did a lot of different roles. He's, you know, learned a lot of different schemes and positions for a rookie. You know, David Long really showed the ability to find a football. He's an instinctive player. You know, so again, we'll we'll have to keep developing them. You know, the ones that didn't didn't help us as much as others, or maybe that were were injured and not available. And you know, that's those, those guys need to t take a big jump from their first year to their second year. How much do you now measure yourself against the Chiefs? Like, do you view them as as a team that you need to be able to match up with and get past, or do you just measure yourself? I, I don't know, against what you see on the film and know your own shortcomings are. Um, you know, I think the only way to measure yourself is, you know, did you, did you win or did you lose? And so, you know, we lost yesterday. We didn't, we didn't take advantage enough of the opportunity to go play for a Super Bowl. You know, we, we understand that we, you know, what the expectations are. You know, that's the only way that I can try to measure our progress is, is by success. In terms of roster construction, perhaps. Um, you know, John and I are going to put together the most competitive 90-man roster that we possibly can. Um, we, we talk about it. Um, and then at that point in time, then we, we, we move the roster around and get it down to 53 and get 10 guys on a practice squad that we feel like, you know, we want to continue to work with. You know, that's how the roster goes. I. Again, I, I love coaching our football team. These guys played. They embraced uh, the effort and finish, and you know, we'll get better like, like we have to each and every year. Well, you guys, something like we need to be faster on the back end to keep up with their receivers. We need to, we need to be able to hit somebody like Mahomes more. Do, do you make comparisons like that? Um, you know, that's all part of the evaluation process um, is trying to find the best players um, at each position. And... If they're fast and they can do their job, great. If they're, you know, whatever their skill set may be, but um, you know, we just didn't we just didn't play well enough yesterday, and you know, to 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 win. As you discussed building the roster moving forward, a bunch of the players, some with uncertain futures, all said essentially we love this place and kind of hinted that they'd like to be back. You just talked about loving a lot of these guys as you discuss it. What's the challenge of having a run like this and being as tight as this team is, but making, I guess, the smart business decision of we really need this guy or we maybe need to, you know, go in a different direction? Well, I mean, I think it's always a, a two-way street, right? You have to want, you know, the player has to want to be here. Um, and, and the team has to try to do its job um, to, to make sure that that fits um, with, with its plans, with the plans that John and I have. I would love to be able to, to give you answers to those questions, but um, you know, the, for us, the free agent process is is just starting. You know, for us to be able to evaluate 
and to see where um, you know we may go. Now that's something that John and I will do. I, I just I just can't give you any answers on that right now. Do you have to take the emotions out of it though? Or, or well, I mean, I think you have to always t try to take emotion out of you know, critical decisions. You, know, you have to say, you know, what is this player? What will this player be? What is the, the vision for the player? What's the player's future? Um, you know, and, and again, it, it, it's, it is a two-way street. You know? Sorry, uh, Rashawn talked about his, uh, his foot injury yesterday, maybe getting an MRI on that, wondering if... Any idea if, if Rashawn or anybody will have off-season procedures? No, I mean, you, you should ask them. They're pretty much willing to give you the information. So I try to ask them. How confident are you that with all that Derek accomplished this year that you'll be able to retain him and he'll be a part of this team going forward? Um, you know, again, pr the, the thing that I'm probably most proud of Derek is his, his leadership ability improved. Um, I think he went from... From a, a a good running back to a very you know very good running back and, and that that all you know will work itself out. But he became a um, a leader. I think he led helped lead this football team. I think he helped carry my message and our and our staff's message into the locker room. Um, I think his durability, his effort, his toughness allowed him to be a leader. I think that when he was excited and he uh, talked to guys on the field or in the locker room, uh, they, they listened. And, and I just wanted to make him aware of that, that you know, he was starting to become that, and, and he needs to understand what his potential is in that regard. What jump started that keep leadership that leadership process? What jump started his leadership process? Uh, I, you know, a lot, of, a lot of guys, it's just comfort. It's, it's, it's the comfort around the coaches or the players or the scheme or what they're doing um, to allow him then to – to extend out, you know, you want to make sure that obviously every everything that you need to be taken care of is taken care of. Like you know your job, you know what you're supposed to do. You you have a routine, um, and at that point in time, then you can, you know, start to help other players and, and try to hold other players accountable and, and lead other people. That would be a difficult thing to replace. Yes. Um, you know, I, I'm not really sure. Um, you know, we always have to have plans in place for every position and to say that um, you know leadership or production um, is hard to replace that's that's our, that's our job you know our job is to find out who's available who we have what we can use and you know we're going to do the best and I know that John and I'll do the best and he'll do the best job that he can um, you know to bring guys back that we have a vision for you've had two years of coaching Marcus Mariota What's your impression of how he's handled the several highs and lows that his career has had over the last two years? You know, talked to Marcus this morning. Um, told him how proud I was of him, how he handled um, the situation. I think he improved. I think he embraced the opportunity to improve each and every day on the show team to, um, to, to lead and to, to develop his skill set. To, to get stronger, um, you know, in his leadership ability. I think a lot of our players look to, to Marcus to see how he would handle that uh, situation. And um, by how he handled it, I think that, that also positively affected our team um, to have a player, a star player, <clears throat> you know, be able to handle that role. What did you see change in the offensive line from the early struggles, maybe the beginning of the year, to, to how they finished? I mean, I think everybody just got – continue to improve. You know, as the quarterback play and Marcus's play or Ryan's play, as one unit gets better, the other one starts to get better. I think everybody feeds off each other. As we run the ball better, you know, the blocking gets better. As we get open quicker, the blocking gets better. As we block better, you know, the quarterback completes more passes. I mean, that's how it's going to go. You know, Nate improved. I think we played with a rookie, you know. Uh, and and he, he got better, you know, and Jack got better. You know, we got Taylor back from, you know, his time away. And, uh, you know, Ben was a mainstay. You know, and Roger, um, you know, continued to improve. But it, it all goes hand in hand. It's not just some magic um, potion 
that they started to improve. I think it, it gradually increased, and as one unit started to play better, you know, the other one um, started to obviously improve, and they feed off each other. If there does end up coming back, is he the kind of back that you can envision again, you know, 400 carries if it comes to that, or, you know, in a perfect world, do you, do you lessen that? Or? Yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes when he when he's back. I, you know, I, I to envision that. I know he's durable. I, um, you know, I, again, it's just about you know where he's at physically and where he's you know that's kind of how it went this year. Mike, you mentioned the, the trying to play home playoff games. Is that maybe the next step, <laughs> getting to be able to you know division title, get some of these games here in Nashville? Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be great for our fans the way they they supported us, um, you know, all year. Very appreciative of it. Um, the excitement. You know, we wish we would have come home um, winners last night and, and find ways to, to get all those people to the, to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm, it's unfortunate that that, that didn't happen. Um, so we can continue to try to build the momentum from the season uh, and get back to that in the offseason. Uh, and hopefully we can carry the confidence over from this year uh, to next year.